Okay, hi. Uh, it's 21st of uh, October today, 2005. And welcome to the review for the ESI Julia. Uh, it comes in a box, there's the box, and it's got this gatefold front that opens out. You've got your advertising blurb on this side, and the card itself enclosed in a nice clear plastic window, which I think is uh, good packaging. The the potential customer in the shop can get to see the actual unit and um, the card's finished in an ivory white which is different there's the card and up here you've got the cables uh, for the SP diff and the MIDI in out which attach to the to the card in a similar fashion to most of the cards in this kind of price bracket and I'm going to try a quick install into this machine here which is an AMD64 a basic AMD64 with a normal IDE drive I'm also going to try it in an older um, AMD XP chipped machine as well. There's the package, and uh, this is the. Okay, so you've got this cable which plugs into the card, and you've got MIDI in and out. And you've got your SP diff in and out. And the card itself, which just pop it out, there it is, let's move that plastic out there. Well there's the card itself. As you can see, you've got, these are gold plated RCA connectors. You've got in left, out left and right. And you've got your little multi-pin connector there which connects the cluster cable for the uh, SP diff, isn't it? Yeah, it's got optical out as well, um, if you wanted to use a cable for that. Now as I said, you've got RCA sockets on this side of the card, but weirdly, on this side of the card, again, they're plated with gold inside, I can see that. You've got quarter inch sockets. If you look here, you can see that the card is split. Look, there's a split all, all across there, yeah? And little connector sockets, yeah? And there's some screws here, 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 and here. Now, if you undo these screws, you can slide this bit of the card out, take the facing plate off, turn the card the other way round and have these quarter inch sockets rather than the RCA sockets here facing outward. So let's just uh, let's just have a go at that. I'll undo these four screws. Now facing plate comes off like that. If the card was in the PCI slot like that, like it's just, you know, plugged into the PCI slot like that, currently the RCA sockets are facing out. And if I can now, now I've undone the plates, so I can split the card in half like this, yeah, turn it around and plug it back the other way around, like that. Oops, missed it. I'm trying to watch the camera screen at the same time. There, and plug the card back the other way around. And now when I plug it in to the PCI slot that way, these quarter inch plus four balanced sockets are facing out. That's pretty cool, huh? Then all you have to do is decide which, which, which you want, the minus ten unbalanced RCA sockets or these. Uh, quarter inch balanced um, plus four sockets and uh, then screw these little these little plates um, just redirect the camera and then all you've got to do is whoops, is uh, just screw these little plates back in to hold the card back together and uh, reattach the facing plate and you've got a choice and I think given the uh, given the entry price of the card that is a, is a really really interesting touch because um, you may be working in a multimedia studio situation where you know a pro situation where you only need stereo in and out but you um, you'd like balanced plus four level and that's really useful okay so that's how the card splits I'm not going to film me putting it screwing all the plates back in together I'm going to put the plates back on so it's set how it was originally with the RCA sockets and then I'm going to try installing it into this AMD64 machine here.
Right, okay, I've screwed the thing back together and it actually didn't take that long, it's not as fiddly as you might think. So I'll just bung it now, you can see that the RCA socket's now facing out again. So I'll just bung it into the PCI slot on here. Now interestingly, um, this motherboard is a mini uh, sort of ATX board and it's only got two PCI slots. So I'll just Chuck that in the socket there, screw it in, and there she is installed, lovely. Now, let's go back to here, yeah, that's better. Okay, now, this is the little plastic pack that came with it. You've got your user guide booklet, which is in how many languages? Oh, just two. Yeah, German and English, that's your lot by the look of it. Yeah, so uh, that's pretty comprehensive. Okay, and installation CD, what's this? Oh, a copy of Traction. Well, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, look, you get a, whoops, I'd not show you the serial number. You get a copy of Traction. Well, that's kind of interesting. Um, I remember with the old Hoontech cards, or the ST Audio cards, they were giving away um, a free copy of Logic 24, the, the, the basic 24-track uh, Logic recording software. OK, um, I'm not going to wire up this cable yet, because initially I'm not going to be testing the audio, or the MIDI in-out, or the SPD or anything like that. So let's fire her up and uh, see what happens now. I'll just move the camera around to the screen. That's right, let's boot her up, see what happens. And that'll give me a chance for a quick slurp of coffee. OK, welcome to the found new hardware wizard. Right, so it's found the card. Oop. You know the procedure here, but for noobs, I'm just going to step through this. Right? And uh, so, install the software automatically recommended. Well, I wonder, because uh, I, I was installing a card recently, actually. The Emu. And I assumed I'd do it the way that I normally do it and then when I read the manual later after it didn't install properly they had a very particular way they wanted you to install it um, I'm just looking through the manual now the manual shows you all the things about splitting the card in half and stuff like that right what do they recommend yeah they recommend install from a specific location right so install from a specific location next and we take the driver CD, put that in, you guys will know all this, but uh, this is a card a lot of noobs might be considered purchasing, it's very cheap, I think it's going for about 70 quid in a lot of shops at the moment, or slightly under 70 pounds in UK pounds, so it's a good bargain. So uh, a lot of beginners might be watching this. I'll take search for the best driver in these locations, and the location that I'm going to choose is going to be the CD. The CD, there. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Uh, audio track. There's some folders inside here. ESI. It's not in that one. It's not in that one. Let's open up the driver folder and there's the Julia folder there. Okay should be visible on screen I think there. so there's drivers here for all their cards um, the uh, ESP 1010 which actually is in fact just up there and we're going to be reviewing that next the ESP 1010 I'm very very keen to have a look at that because it's uh, one of the cheapest 18 out rack units on the market at the moment ok so all the drivers are on this disk in the driver folder, so I'll choose the Julia folder, go inside that, choose PC, oh my god, and go inside that, I'm going, well, I'm going to choose this Julia 1.17 driver, but there's another folder called Old Driver, yeah, which has got various driver um, revisions in it, the 110, 101, 102, so I'm going to choose this newer one, the 1.07, and click and having done that, click OK. 
and then for noobs yeah I'm telling Windows just uh, just to search for the best driver up here yeah search for the best driver and I'm going to search the folder I've just scrolled to which is the Julia folder 1.17 driver so hit next it's now searching for a multimedia audio controller it's found it, you get the usual warning that the software hasn't passed the Windows um, logo testing to verify its compatibility, that happens with every sound card you buy so don't worry about that, continue so I'll click the continue anyway button and let's go back and see what's happening here, so it's installing the driver the drivers and completing the found new hardware wizard the wizard has finished installing the drivers for the Julia controller. There it is, Julia controller. And I click the, oops, click the finish button there. Okay, finish. And down here at the bottom, as is normal for XP, it says found new hardware. Whoop, there it is. Now it's up wanting to install something else, software. Okay, now there. There's a patching software and applet that comes with the card. That needs to be installed now. What do they say about this? It actually says to do it automatically for the software. It's now looking for the software. This might take a while, but you can see it's going search, 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 search. Ah, here we are. The software that you are installing again for the Julia Audio hasn't passed the Windows logo testing, never mind, continue anyway. Now it's installing the software. The wizard has finished installing the software for Julia Audio. Okay, that's that. So I'm going to click the finish button. Just down there, whoops. Finish. And there we are again found new hardware, your hardware is ready, installed and ready to be used. So now I need to go into Windows System, so I'll go to Control Panel, System, Hardware, Device Manager, Sound, Video and Game Controllers, and there we have it. There it is installed, whoops, there is the Julia Audio and Julia Controller, all installed, okay. Let's just Close all that. There's the ESI logo. Okay. Let's zoom out of that. Okay, so I'll double click that. And there's our little control panel. Wow, cool. So what have we got? I wonder if I switch out of night shot if it'll look any better. Well, you see the right colour anyway. So you've got your in and out monitor faders and meters, master fader uh, what have we got? I'll have to not look through the screen to see this ok so working from left to right you've got your input analog 1-2 monitor and you've got your SP diff in monitor and meter uh, on this side you have got your SP diff out monitor here on the right and um, the input for analog input 1-2 now, uh, sorry, the output, and the output has a pair of faders there, yeah. You've also got a master pair of faders. Uh, what else you got? You've got direct wire here, um, for wiring your inputs, and you do that by dragging cables, so you can go from ASIO in, whatever, to your direct wire. And what else have you got? Uh, config, mouse wheel, latency factory default reset and you can load and save your settings well oh, that's a nice little interface so there it is um, sorry I didn't show you that over there did I yeah the sample rate I didn't realize the camera wasn't on it but there's the sample rate section I'll just step you through it again it's currently set to auto but if you take it out of auto you can configure it to 88.200 176 192 96 48 or 44.1 and you can set internal or external clock so I'll close that down let's get some software installed on the machine and uh, see how it performs ok well look I've just, um, I've just opened up Vegas and um, this is the video of the sensor 
live uh, recording and I've um, wired a lead from the ESI which is going all the way through into the other room to the mixing desk and because uh, at the moment I've, I've got nothing to in here and no amp in this room to check it with at the moment but the sound coming out is really nice and crisp how could I describe it sort of crisp like an Akai sampler like the, you know in the old days like Akai sampler had a certain kind of upfront crispness it's kind of a bit like that nice okay so that's not really any kind of a check but this is just to check it's working okay let's see if we can hear a bit of the actual music yeah playing everything's nice so that's all working uh, best thing we need to do now is try it with an actual sequence so there was some simultaneous audio in out and stuff like that there you go. So far, so good. Okay, we're back in the other room now. Um, I've installed the Julia. Oh, I've just uh, put it into this uh, AMD 2000, which previously was running this Huntech DSP 2496 with the multi-pin connector, and that was connected by the multi-pin to the DSP rack. Okay, uh, it's always been very reliable with Logic and Cubase. Um, I've connected the cluster cable with the SP different and MIDI. If I just switch the light on this camera, but there is actually there. You probably won't be able to see it on the video, but it says MIDI in on this little sleeve on the cable, and the other one will come in. The other one there says MIDI out. It's a bit hard to see, but this is there. So they're marked. So we've got we've got the machine booted up. Let's, uh, let's install it. Get this set up and see how it fares. Right, it's found the hardware. Let's put in the old disc. This is the same procedure as we did on the AMD 64 next door. But, uh, I want to get this video up tonight if possible and uh, I'll investigate how well it works for the 64 after I've put some sequence software on there, but just for now. I want to put it on this older AMD 2000 and uh, just check how it's working with Logic. So, same scenario as before, found new hardware wizard, and I'm going to install from a list or specific location. Okay. So far, so good. Uh, this is a via chipset board, by the way. It's um, a KT333. I actually like via sets. Uh, never had a problem with them. Now, where are we? The wizard has finished installing the software for the Julia controller. Now it'll, it'll go through a bit like on the other machine of installing the software. And now it's installing the software. Hardware wizard. The wizard has finished installing the software for the, yes, for the Julia audio. Okay, so let's OK that. Next, so finish. Make sure it's in the system. Nope. And there in the, in the device manager, there's the Julia audio and the Julia controller. Okay. Now after rebooting, we'll get the little Julia logo for the patch system down there on the clock. Uh, taskbar or whatever you call it. Yeah. So I'll just reboot now. Okay, let's just log in. And we should see down, down on the clock there, the ES, there it is. There's the little ESI. Stand up, you bugger. No. There's a little SI logo, so I'll click that. And there we have it. There's our, there's our panel. We've been into that already with the faders in and out and everything. There is one thing to note. When I describe this um, sample rate thing, if it's set to auto, it means that basically the uh, sample rate is set by the, the host application that you're using the card with. Yeah, otherwise, you can fix it. Right, well, um, let's open something and... See if we can get a bit of audio. Uh, let's try and play something from Wavelab. Oops, going in here. I'm going into the uh, options because I'm going to set the preferences there. Options, preferences. There, and then down here there's the audio card. It's currently set to the WGM Microsoft Sound Mapper. Okay, just. There we are, MME Julia, 
channel 1, 2, or channel 3, 4, or channel 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to choose the ASIO ESI Julia. That one. And I'm going to limit it to two ins and two outs, which it has, and uh, OK it. And let's hit play. Let's just zoom out again. Okay. So let's hit play and see what happens. Oh, nice. Nice one. I'll drop the volume a bit. Okay, let's just have a look at this applet. There's the ESI applet. You can see I'm getting a level there on the meter. I'll just drop that meter a bit. This is the output meter for the analog out. There it is. And that's also over there. There's the master out. It has no fader. Um, I mean, it has no um, level meter, but I'll just. That's working okay. Mute's working okay. Yeah, lovely. That seems all right so far, so there you go. Okay, I'll, uh, let's get Logic booted up. Let's close that down. Let's uh, just zoom in on this a bit. Okay, I'm not going to zoom right in to show you the details of this because I don't want to keep coming back to move the camera, it'll take ages. But basically, audio, audio hardware and drivers, audio driver 2 tab. Oh, no, this is why it's failed because if you zoom in, you can see, see it's still set to the ASIO driver for the for the old ST audio. So I'm going to change that for the ESI2 Julia. Please reboot, so I'll do the try and relaunch thing. It's in initialising the uh, ASIO drivers. Come on, baby. And uh, the clock source is Julia clock. Let's close it and let's load something up. Well, it's playing okay. Let's, uh, let's try and connect to MIDI. Okay. Switch on the keyboard. So we get some MIDI in. Oh yeah, MIDI in's working full. Lovely. Keyboard player, by the way. Acoustic ground. Let's try that. There we go. Yeah, well, the minis are working. Yeah, lovely. Okay. Well, oh, seems okay. Um, I can't obviously film testing, recording some audio and everything like that, it, it would just make the video drag on and on and on. But anyway, basically it's it's installed first time on this machine, which is an old AMD 2000 on a biochip set. Uh, the machine next door is not a biochip set, it's, uh, I'm not sure what it is. Actually, I'm going to take a quick look now. It's this Asus X-Series. It's the K8S MX EAYZ. Yeah, said. And I don't know what the chipset is on it, but it installed okay. Certainly on playback, there were no um, <coughs> there were no cracks or pops or anything like that. Uh, SIS 760GX and an SIS 965L. So as I say, playback was working okay. Well, anyway, so we got MIDI and audio out seems to be fine. It's a very nice crisp sound, I must say that. Anyway, running out of tape now, so that's the end of that. And uh, what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll try recording some vocals and things, and um, I'll add that as text to the page of the review, and um, that'll give you an idea of how things went. But basically, nice crisp sound, very present, and, and I don't keep using the word crisp, but it is very present sounding. Flawless installation on two machines. Uh, with two different chipsets via an SIS and uh, both machines on playback were working okay so now it's just a question of testing them with simultaneous playback and record and uh, see how we get on but there you go the ESI Julia very well priced and uh, definitely worth checking out with its ability to function in a semi-pro studio or even in a pro 
multimedia suite or something like that with balanced plus four outputs and inputs.